On today's episode of Dr. Lozello's Sports Medicine Report, I'm going to speak about Halix Limitus and Halix Rigidus. This is osteoarthritis of the great toe. This painful and performance limiting condition is a common condition among athletes, especially runners and athletes who run. Now I'm going to give you a quick anatomy lesson. This is a plastic model of the foot. This injury occurs in the forefoot. The forefoot is the toes and these five bones right here. These are called the metatarsal bones. When we look at the big toe, now you have a plantar view of the foot. That means you're looking at it from the bottom. These are the metatarsal bones. There are five metatarsal bones and these bones up here, these are the toes. This is the inside part or the medial part of the foot. And here is the big toe, these two bones right here. The big toe is often referred to as the great toe. In medical terminology, the big toe is called the hallux, H-A-L-L-U-S. Again, the hallux, H-A-L-L-U-S. Hallux limitus and hallux rigidus are osteoarthritis of this joint right here. Again, this is the great toe. The metatarsal bones are numbered from one to five, starting from the inside part of the foot and moving towards the outside. So this is the first metatarsal bone. These bones up here in the toes, these are called the phalanges. In the great toe, there are only two phalanges. In toes two through five, there are three phalanges. In the great toe, we have the distal phalange and the proximal phalange. The joint in between them is called the interphalangeal joint. The joint where hallux limitus and hallux rigidus occurs is right here. This is called the metatarsal phalangeal joint or the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. A healthy great toe is essential for proper foot biomechanics. We want the entire foot to be working properly. If there is something that is not working properly, it places an increased demand on another area. Hallux limitus and hallux rigidus are classified as osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis, sometimes is abbreviated to OA. It's also known as degenerative joint disease, which can also be abbreviated to DJD. Hallux limitus means that there is limited motion in the great toe at the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Hallux rigidus is a progression of hallux limitus. It means that that joint is rigid, meaning there is very little or almost no motion at the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Like I said, this is osteoarthritis. It can be caused by a trauma to that area and then the long-term sequela of that trauma, or it can be caused by just repetitive trauma. With osteoarthritis, the overload, the over demand of the joint causes a breakdown and loss of the joint cartilage, and that leads to a reduction in the joint space. Therefore, that joint cannot function the way that it should, it cannot move the way that it should. When we speak about symptoms of hallux limitus and hallux rigidus, speak about pain, dull, achy, deep pain inside the joint. There's limited motion and loss of function. Usually these symptoms are increased when the weather is cold and damp, and they are also increased when this joint, when the foot is being used and it may take longer for this area to recover from a competition or from a training session. The symptoms of hallux limitus and hallux rigidus are pain, stiffness, achiness, like I mentioned before, deep with inside the joint, lack of motion in the great toe in all motions, but especially in what is called dorsiflexion, where the toe is flexing towards the top of the foot. This can be a 
condition that causes us to push off on the outside part of the foot. So it changes the biomechanics of the foot. It changes the way that we move. That, that can lead to other painful and performance limiting conditions. Also this condition, we may see a deviation of the great toe towards the outside part of the foot. And that can lead to other conditions, especially a bunion right down over here. Now, one thing I want to say is osteoarthritis, I already did a video in Dr. Zella's Sports Medicine Report on osteoarthritis. So I'm going to put a link to that at the end of this video so you can go ahead and watch that. I don't want to go over all the anatomy and the physiology of osteoarthritis again in this video because we're specifically talking about the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Again, you can watch that video, really learn a great deal. But with this condition, again, if this is not functioning right, many times we push off on the outside part of the foot. Or if we try to push off like we should up here, push off is very, very painful. And that will increase the symptoms. Increase of symptoms with hallux limitus and hallux rigidus usually occur when we're weight bearing, usually it, it progressively gets worse where it may be there constantly. And again, because it's osteoarthritis, this is a progressive condition. So it's going to gradually build up and it's going to gradually get worse unless you take action to do everything you can to correct the biomechanics and get the most out of what is going on in the toe. And what I mean by that is right now, medical science, we haven't figured out how to repair cartilage, how to repair a joint that is osteoarthritic. So you want to make sure that whatever is there functions as well as it can. There are intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors of hallux limitus and hallux rigidus. When we speak about the extrinsic factors, that are things outside of the body that we are doing that is either making this condition develop or making this condition progress. Overtraining. Overtraining is one of the main things that we do that causes this condition. When we speak about the intrinsic factors of this condition, there can be weakness in this arch right here. This is called the transverse arch, arch or the metatarsal arch. There could also be weakness in the foot muscles, especially the muscles that flex the toes. So those are the muscles in the forefoot on the plantar aspect of the foot. So the toe flexors can be weak. There can also be tightness in the muscles that dorsiflex the toes, especially the muscle that dorsiflexes the great toe. Those are some of the basic contributing factors. Also, any foot condition, one of the contributing factors can be what's called hyper pronation. So you want to think about that. That is caused by poor biomechanics and weakness in the foot muscles. So weakness in the foot muscles is a key contributing intrinsic factor to this condition. And then you combine that with overtraining, doing too much training, not doing your cross training. That's what causes this condition. Also, one thing that may not be able to be helped is Many times if someone has a longer first metatarsal bone, that is often a contributing factor to this condition. Prevention. I say this in so many of my videos. Prevention is easier, faster, and less expensive than injury rehabilitation. Do everything that you possibly can to prevent this painful and performance limiting condition. Strengthen your feet. I have another video in Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. I'm gonna put a link to it at the end of this video. It is a foot strengthening video. Do these exercises. It will help to strengthen the entire foot, but specifically the forefoot exercises and the exercises that strengthen the muscles that support the longitudinal arches. So these exercises will help you to prevent this exercise. Also, Stretch your calf muscles, stretch your Achilles tendon, massage your feet, break up the muscle tension, especially in the muscles that are going to flex the toes, dorsiflex the toes, so you can massage 
these muscles in through here. This will help to prevent this condition. Also, like I said, strengthen the muscles in the plantar aspect of the foot and stretch the Achilles tendon and the calf muscles. Doing those will help to correct the biomechanics in your feet and help to prevent this condition. Also, with your training, train smart. When you are formulating your training routine, please add rest days. Give your body adequate rest between training sessions. Do cross training. Please do cross training. Running is fantastic exercise, but if running is causing this condition, then modify your running schedule. Add more days where you're on the bike or add more days where you're in the pool or add more days where you're doing some type of exercise that isn't pounding on the feet, especially on the toes. Doing these things is going to help to prevent this condition. If symptoms should occur, seek medical professional help. You want to make sure that you get the diagnosis correctly. When you get a correct diagnosis, that will help lead you on the proper path to rehabilitation. What you want to try to do is eliminate the causing factors, eliminate the contributing sources to this condition. You will have to modify your training. You're going to have to strengthen your feet. Just like we talked about with prevention, those are the same type of things that you're going to have to do to recover from this condition. Do foot range of motion exercises. Do passive and active foot range of motion exercises. Do the foot strengthening exercises, especially the ones that strengthen the foot flexor muscles. Massage the top of the feet. These things are going to help you a great deal. Now, seek medical care, like I always or I already spoke about, because you want to make sure that you have the correct diagnosis. This will help you a great deal. Also, professional treatment will help to prevent any progression of this condition. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have seen this condition in my office. I cannot restore the joint to what it was before, but I can get the joint where it's at right now to function as well as, as it can and hopefully to slow down any progression of this condition. Footwear is vital when it comes to any foot condition. You want to make sure that you have proper fitting shoes and shoes that give you the adequate support that you need. Also, custom fit orthotics may help you a great deal. Custom fit orthotics are going to work and provide you the individual needs that you have. It's going to give you support where you need it. So that's something that you want to look into. Also, a toe spacer may help with this condition. You want to use a toe spacer that covers the length of the toe and helps to prevent deviation of the great toe where it moves to the lateral or the outside part of the foot. Thank you everyone for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. Halix Limitus and Halix Rigidus are painful and performance limiting conditions. Do everything that you possibly can to prevent this condition and do everything that you possibly can to recover from this condition. If you are a runner or an athlete who runs for your sport, make sure that your feet are as healthy as possible. Proper functioning feet, proper biomechanics in the feet and the lower leg are imperative for success. Please, please, please feel free to like this video. Also, if you have suggestions, feedback, or questions, please leave them in the comment section. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book. And also, you can watch my other videos. Like I spoke about, I'm going to attach two videos to the end of this video. I'm going to provide the link. One is going to be on osteoarthritis, and the other one is going to be on foot strengthening exercises. So view those. It's going to give you a much better understanding of this condition, and it's going to give you a much better understanding of what you can do to strengthen your feet. Thank you very much for viewing today's episode. Always remember, train hard, 
train smart, stay injury-free, and accomplish your goals.